Hello and welcome. This is uh, Kafir speaking from uh, Peach Boy Studios, and I wanted to talk about uh, our new Rigify design. We're using um, Nathan Dagdal's uh, Rigify system. Here is uh, the layout you would get from uh, the normal general uh, Rigify and here is our layout as you can even first see we have like a few differences um, I don't know different spine uh, spine number and face the differences are even uh, more than that and I'll get into that later but generally um, a rig uh, rigify is constructed of rig types various rig types and so um, each each meta rig is cons constructed of various rig types and what you can see from here this is for example would be an arm rig type and this would be a spine rig type this, these would be the um, clavicle or shoulder rig type these are the leg rig types and each rig type would be defined here over here in the rig type panel can see the the rig type's name this would be arm it's uh, it is defined from the first bone of the connected chain you, you won't see it here even though this is th this would be an arm too first chain and this would be an bipad arm bipad leg and you have the parameters set for each of those and th these are the general this is the general layout that uh, that is already offered in the Rigify and there are many other tutorials I assume that talk about it and how you can use it so we won't be talking about this we would be talking about our um, new Rigify which you could download and in this setup it's of course constructed in the same way because it's still Rigify we have different uh, different names and different a different solution for for the layout for the rigging layout and once I'll generate this this rig uh, we will talk about the differences and uh, the features that this rig type has and the, the this meta rig has um, so let's go over each rig type and uh, talk about a bit what they can do and then we'll generate it and we'll see what it all does um, so this is the face rig type it's rather complex it has a lot of bones and I maybe I'll add right now that if you'll get into edit mode and maybe delete a bone or something like that it will it won't work it has to work uh, it works with all its bones and if one will be missing the code won't run um, also, uh, each each name, especially for the face, I guess I guess only for the face, um, must the n the names must remain as they are because uh, this is how the code is constructed. And uh, the parent bone of the face is here. You can see the rig type, the face rig type. You can change the uh, tell tell Rigify where to put the layers when it's cons when it's generated. So you have one extra layer and a, a primary extra layer and a secondary extra layer, and we'll talk about it later once it's generated. Um, this entire spine from from the tailbone to the head is called the torso or the super torso turbo. <laughs> um, yeah, it's a weird name, but uh, it's it's my it's my fault. It's <laughs> anyway, you can uh, you can change uh, the tweak. There's a, there's a tweak layer here, and there's uh, you can change the positions. And we'll talk about the posi the different positions and what all of this means once it's generated. But basically, the uh, neck position would be. Uh, here it's the fifth bone, so one, two, three, four, 
five, so the fifth bone will start a neck. So uh, in, in Nathan's rig, it's uh, it's different. The general rigifies. Uh, it's different. It's, uh, there's a torso rig type and a neck rig type. We connected the torso with the neck and head together as one. There's also the pivot, pivot position, which be the third bone. This is where the the, the torso is uh, would be rotating, would be the center, would would signify the center of uh, the torso. This is a general layout. We can change it and tweak it around, but we we gave uh, in this meta rig uh, a general solution. And and uh, and also, of course, uh, you can change and add, like subdividing. The, you can subdivide the the meta rig to any number of bones you would like, and it will work fine. And then you can just you should just uh, you can change it. I mean, if you would add like three more bones here, then I guess this won't be f this bone w won't be the fifth bone. It would be a bit higher, a bit a higher number, a higher number. Um, but this uh, and it it should it should work uh, fine also. Yeah, so so the standard meta rig uh, also has this feature when you can you can add subdivisions to it and and reach any number of uh, I don't know you would call it vertebras, vertebrae, and uh, and it should uh, work. So it follows the same logic, but uh, the result, uh, as you could see, would see later would be different. Um, here's the limb, the limbs and arm rig type. has its parameters. Um, this, the hand and the the feet, the the legs, you can see that they're they're basically the same rig type. It's a super limb. And what what it means is that we figured out that a hand a an arm and a leg and let's see what even we have more and a paw is basically follows similar to the same rules just have a uh, different ending so uh, it's basically it's the same rig type but it has a different parameter so you can make it a leg you can make it an arm this is already set up correctly and, and it works but it can be changed so this limb would be an arm and it has a rotation axis uh, which you will see later and a number of segments it will be segmented in two we can change that and we'll play with that later and the b-bone segment and we'll see that later how it, how the b-bones uh, operate with this uh, setup and the same goes here this would be the leg it has a bone that uh, that is a few additional bones uh, one would be to show where the uh, heel would be and the toes. This, these are these palm rigs. Wait, where's the rig type? Oh, this this is the rig type of the palm. It uh, it's the same rig type as uh, the general meta, uh, the default meta rig. Uh, we didn't change that, so that that would be the same. But we did make uh, uh, oh, we call it simple tentacle, and the, these would be the the fingers. They they follow a different uh, a bit of a different uh, logic, it's mainly because of uh, an our animators' preferences for uh, finger animation. So that covers all. Oh, and and this rig type, which is a basic copy and is used for the clavicle. It's uh, it's it's the same. It's not. We didn't change that. We didn't. It's the de It's the al also the default. Um, okay, I think we can generate it. Let's generate this guy. So I'm in pose mode, and here under the object data of the rig, rigify buttons, generate, and the script runs. It should take about seven seconds. Well, it took took less okay. good computer not mine
Okay, so here's the result. Let's hide the meta rig and see what happened here. So this is what happens once you uh, generate the rig of high of made the meta rig on a, a hide mode, and as you can see, we have like some different aspects of of uh, it. It doesn't look like the normal rig you would see first of all we, there are a lot of connections we don't want to see so let's, uh, let's put relation in under display relationship lines uncheck that and let's see what happened here so let's get into pose mode and see what is going on and we can see how also that uh, rig layers we have also a UI set up for each layer and we'll I think it will be best if we'll just go by each layer and talk about what happened so let's turn everything off and start talking about just the face and here are the face main controllers You would see that this this is our uh, under the third to last layer. We have the deformation bones, and this is how it works. Basically, it's, uh, it's an automated system. We have the jaw. If you could connect by parenting a teeth to the setup, the nose, and eyes controller. You can see that the there's an automated movement for the uh, the eyelids for the eyelids and these these would be the general ones there's an ear and you can take the entire eye and move it uh, let's go to this second the face primary and these are these these ones and I'll put it under not B bone, so I stick. You can see that each bone, if you want it to smile, there's also automated responses for the the rest of the face, so it uh, moves proportionally, as as you would generally expect a, a face to to move. Well, like for instance, when you raise your upper lips, so the, the nose would move a bit, and etc. So you can play around with that. Um, so that would be the face. Let's go. There's also a secondary layer. Let's see what. Uh, the secondary layer is just another layer of uh, smaller. Well, it's basically it's the same as the primary, but. It's, uh, just a bit more fine-tuned okay so that being said let's go to the torso I think I think this this is blown out a bit more we need to scale it down just go here quickly and scale this widget down yeah okay Maybe that's that should be a fix. I think, and these ones too. They need to be scaled down just a slightly. Okay. So uh, you have a general torso controller. Works as you would expect. And then you have the hips or so which rotates and in this rig the main difference between this one and, and uh, the default one is that you can also move it and it stretches it's a stretchy setup so this setup is very good for productions when you can when you need to work with characters that need to move around stretch or have like a cartoony need it to have a cartoony effect so these things are very much needed also uh, this chest controller 
is controlling the major part of of the, the spine it rotates it and moves it and also it's it's scaled and it's scaled in a way that only one part only the the controller you want is being scaled directly and it does not interfere so this can be like for breathing uh, and etc basically put it anywhere in anywhere in any position you would like you have a neck also you can scale it up and only scales the neck and not the the head you can rotate it and the head also can rotate and move and scale around um, that is the torso and I'm trying to say I'm on a melody yeah okay so there is uh, we have a prop properties that are specific for for this region the torso region and these are the head follow and neck follow usually once you're animating you want the head to stick not not to inherit the rotation of the torso so you won't have to counter animate but you do need to but sometimes you do need and want to maintain that relationship of uh, inheritance so you have the neck which now is following 50% you can see that it moves only 50% and the head does not move at all so we can change their inheritance and set it to 1 and now they inherit exactly the same rotation uh, as you would expect when you change it and alter it on the go and you can uh, insert keyframes here so you have a property that is fully functional also I think on the head there is something I forgot there is the mouth lock and eyes follow the mouth lock moves it let's uh, go to it what the hell did I do the the mouth lock basically as it sounds now the the jaw is opened and the mouth lock closes the mouth and you you would move the jaw as if it, the character is chewing so turn it to zero and the eyes follow now it follows 100 percent so when I move the head you see that the eyes the eye target is following but if it doesn't follow wait oh this is something else if it doesn't follow it will stay and the eyes would direct to it I think it would be a better we would see it better uh, when when it's on a character so we'll, we'll save that for later eyes follow one neck follow 50% so that's the torso now let's move there's also a torso tweak which we forgot and you can just any vertebra any intersection you can move um, as you wish these are the tweak bones you can also rotate them you would see it on the octahedral mode you can rotate and scale each uh, section so it gives you like uh, gives you much more freedom when you manipulate the your rig and not a bad manipulation good manipulation. okay so uh, let's go to the fingers fingers are the generally the same layout as uh, the general one just in this case we have just an option to move it around to move each uh, target each uh, controller rotate it separately and uh, and it's you can see it's stretch it's also a stretchy setup it seems like a general note uh, stretchy setup is something that is very much required uh, when working on a, an animation production I mean you can't it seems like you really can't do without it you want your animations to 
to flow, you want to feel the, the movement, and you want to have all these options um, open to you. So if, if a setup is not stretchy, our animators are complaining that they can't work with it, basically. Uh, okay, so the let's go to the arm. So we have the arm IK. Let's start with the IK. Okay, you can see this is we have the IK target control. Works as you would expect it. Uh, I'm not used to this, but <laughs> so this uh, I uh, hand target is yeah, I wanted to move it to normal and so you can see it's a, a normal setup we don't have in in this uh, in this IK setup and all of the IKs an IK target there is no vector target you would see in a normal uh, rigs that they have there's like a, should be a pole around here and the arm moves and then we move the pole around and then the arm the elbow or the knee would rotate in uh, in this rig our idea was something similar to the uh, what's it called to the there's a face machine and there's this setup yeah similar to the setup machine uh, yeah, Maya's setup machine. There's a plugin for Maya called Setup Machine, and and we, the, our studio used to work with it before we got into Blender, and and it's uh, basically, I think personally, it works. It works better. It works much better because you don't have to mess around and search where a pole vector would be. You have a controller right on the arm, and you just rotate it. And it moves as you would expect it to move. And also another bonus we get is you can scale it so you can stretch and squash the hand or the, the leg. They work the same if I'll demonstrate it on the leg as well. Um, yeah, so that's the IK setup. Also there's a, as you can see, a soft soft IK setup so when I'll move it there's not popping and there's no popping and this this is something that is a bit subtle and uh, I guess versed animators would notice it um, once you're keyframing and animating a hand or, or a leg and an arm or a leg and you see you would see that really close to the end there is like a little pop and and we fixed that in this solution it's it's working fairly s in, a, in a smooth way there we don't have to time to make the comparison but we'll make it in a different video explaining exactly what soft soft IK means but this setup has that so that's good um, also there's an FK layer and we can switch to it just as you would expect the normal normal way and here we go we didn't uh, we didn't make any put any cons uh, locks on on the axes of rotation our animators prefer to have freedom to choose and manually just rotate the correct axes because I don't know, they just want the freedom to do whatever they want. This would be the hand, and uh, here you can, if you would scale each element, you would get a stretchy response. Here would be the, the hand itself, so I can basically maneuver it wherever I want. Let's bring it back to the IK. There's another layer called the tweak layer as well. And the tweak layer moves again as you would expect it inside and in, uh, the, with the torso. It's uh, moving uh, each, each area. And uh, yeah, it 
uh, it gives a way way more freedom uh, sometimes even a bit more freedom that you want you need but in case in case you would actually need to use it it's there same thing goes for the, the legs have tweak bones just the upper area is the same oh and I forgot the the upper IK control is also you can move around and it and it acts as an inverse IK inverse IK IK is inverse kinematic so it would be inverse inverse kinematics um, the the leg has an additional few two additional um, controls that would be the heel which rocks the leg back and forth and also uh, rolls sorry rolls and now it rocks and these are the toes it's a very simple setup and it works the same way with IK and FK and also there's a limitation currently you can stretch the leg wherever you want but can all can limit that stretch and it works smoothly and that's also in the normal rigafine okay so that's I think we will work walk through the entire differences um, now we can start start binding this uh, this setup to a character hello this is Kfir uh, from Peachy Poi and uh, today we'll be talking about the uh, our rigging process how uh, we start from a general uh, figure general character we have this is an example from uh, a character we use uh, for for our production uh, needs and now we'll we'll basically use our rigify uh, setup the extension we created. So this this character is from uh, Baldy Heights. This is one of the extras that should be there. Um, so we'll be we'll be uh, rigging it with the extension we created uh, for Rigify. And let's begin. So first, I'll uh, add uh, the human Pichy Poi can see it's uh, not it doesn't have the same uh, the same properties <laughs> or the same the same uh, proportion proportions and scale and we'll have to make sure it works before we generate it won't work if we'll generate it now <laughs> as you might guess so uh, before before we'll uh, start uh, rigging this character, let's just first of all put it in a different layer. Let's just put it here. Talk about a few uh, general notes about our characters and how we set them up in the Blender scene. So uh, the first layer we would use for the skin of the body. Uh, this is the basic. Uh, the basic uh, beginning we we use for for skinning for uh, for the weight painting. After that, we have the, the first layer of the uh, of the clothes, and we also added the eyes and the teeth and tongue. These go in the second layer. Now the third layer, not all characters have that, but that would be ex extra things like he has this jacket type idea and uh, a belt goes around him. And also, if you're a bit experienced with uh, with rigging, you would understand that this these things can be uh, be prove uh, can prove themselves as quite of a challenge, and we'll show how we tackle these issues and uh, come up with a rather nice solution I, I, I think so the first stage would be to take um, this 
metarig and appropriate it to the character. And let's and that will be in uh, edit mode, but we'll have to make sure it's on X-ray, and so we'll see what we're doing. And let's uh, go over and start start the the appropriation, or however you should call it. Uh, make sure you're in X axis mirror. I entered in edit mode, and now I'm moving uh, each bone to its uh, location. And then I'll also talk about like the different things that you should be aware of when creating this rig and what each bone does. So the first thing we see here is the heel bone, and we'll specify the location. So in this in this example the heel should should denote the actual place where the the heel meets the the ground and the edge the edge of the heel where it actually cuz around this axis it will rotate when it when the leg rolls the foot rolls and making sure that you see this this is middle part between the head and the tail of the bone should correspond to the middle part of uh, the foot. This is just how we designed it, so Rigify will know that from this bone it will construct other bones, uh, but this is more for mechanism bones and it's not for the uh, general users. So um, that would be the ankle, set it up here and the toes. Now when you set up the toes I prefer and I think it will be most people would prefer that they will be aligned with the ground making sure that these are parallel to the ground just for purposes of uh, of niceties or just uh, when you're when you're animating you want to make sure that uh, the controllers are aligned well also making sure that this bone is set on the ground see the location Z it just it makes it much cleaner now let's go from on these axes move them it's aligned in the center now let's go for the leg here So, um, so the leg, you want to, you want to try, and I mean, it depends on the character, but you want to try and as much as possible make them straight. The IKs work better this way, um, so I'll try to align as much as possible. Even though you see that the leg is curved here, I mean, there's there's a give and take here, but generally this is where you want it to be because uh, later when the IK legs uh, bend you don't want the the, f the foot uh, the leg to go off somewhere you wouldn't expect so you want it to try to generally uh, fold this way on a straight straight line so you try to keep them in a straight line as well uh, these this is the connection to the waist the waist to the yeah the waist the yeah to the pelvis this is the connection to the pelvis where they connect um, here I would suggest to go to anatomy books and see how how you would appropriate uh, the proportions and the position. here I'm making the adjustments for the the adjustments for the pelvis area and here you would want to use some uh, anatomy studies would really help it's uh, just the tailbone and the rest of the spine now in making the spine as you, you can see here that the spine usually should be somewhere around the really really close to the back like really close to the the rim or the outer edge of the back but here I'm trying to put it 
as much as possible in the center as well as in the, in the legs maybe the the bones the actual bone layout is here but we try to put it in the center axis because um, we are going to use the bones for weighting purposes and also um, these bones are not don't s are not si a simulation of actual simulation of bones they're they are there to make uh, deformations work and we want the deformations to go on as smooth as possible and getting smooth results you want to make sure that these uh, these axes you're you're aligning for the body to move I mean they should res of course uh, correspond to bones but because it's it's not a perfect simulation you want to make sure it's uh, sitting on the center as much as possible I mean it's a trade-off between putting it towards the center and making it anatomically correct so that's a little little hint uh, or a little uh, tip there um, also when I create these as a bones I try to make uh, I try to line them up uh, to be fairly even the setup works like that uh, better the neck being an exception from the, the entire torso now let's align the face so I'll put the the face rig type uh, main bone around here it doesn't really matter where it's located it can be even located here but just to make things more smooth we'll center it around where the head is located so uh, scale that one here and now when I'm aligning the face this is this whole um, procedure is uh, very delicate and you want to make sure that there aren't, you don't make uh, mistakes and move things too much or to a place that shouldn't be it, the face was designed to be to try to be uh, more uh, anatomically uh, respond to the anatomy of, of let's move these things wait to correspond to the uh, anatomy and if we're making adjustments here that are not I mean that they won't if we're making adjustments that are not correct or that don't correspond to the right anatomical proportion or uh, location then things could could look kind of weird and going back to what I said before uh, as to where the bones should be located these bones represent actual bones and the bones around the face represent muscle so the way we would lay out bones for the face would not be in the center I wouldn't put the nose around here I would try to put it as close as I can to the edge not too close but fairly close and I'm trying to align each bone um, in order to understand like where should each bone be located each one has its its own name so if that would be nose the first of the nose so I know it should be that would be the beginning where the nose should be also some sometimes I have to double click uh, a bone or a segment to make sure I'm moving I'm not disconnecting things so if I would take this one and move it around that's not good we want to make sure that they're kept at their position together because th this bone would be a, a deformation bone that would stretch to here and it would just it would not work right if if we move that to a wrong position so have to be careful about that with using this setup Let's continue 
making the adjustment. Sometimes it's kind of hard to see what you're actually doing, so you want to move around in a 3D view and see where it's actually being aligned and just using your skill. Maybe in modeling you can see where, where you put things and make sure they're in the right spot. <coughs> This one is kind of like off, you know. Uh, inside view, you couldn't see that, but when you go into 3D view, you see that it's not, not in the right direction or in the right place. Okay, it's good. Let's go over chin area. This bone should be the under chin, under the jaw. These are the sides of the jaw, putting them towards the side. Now this point here, between the temple area and the jaw area, is where the jaw hinge uh, is going to be located, like between them in the center, between this, this one and the other. Um, so I try to make it as low as possible, but also make sure that it's in the right position as well. Low as possible usually from trying things out it seems like the even though the jaw hinge would anatomically be around here making it a bit lower would give a better result at the end. Let's move the entire ear and this area so basically this bone for the ear is going I select this is going to be the general controller and these are the controllers for tweaking the ear. So there's one on the top, in the middle, and the bottom of the ear. Let's align them correctly. Now let's go for the, f the uh, lips. Going for the lips, uh, I think I think it'd be better if I'll just uh, make it go to object and make it a wireframe. Yeah, wireframe is just <laughs> much better <laughs> results. I'm just uh, giving myself too much of an effort. So going for the lips here, yeah, just like quickly like that also and with the lips as well you want to make sure it's uh, even evenly spaced as well as much as possible the lips uh, I would try to put the bones to be a, in the center of the lip mass because the lips are quite autonomous uh, in terms of the, the way they're constructed Ra like uh, if I would compare the lips as the to the forehead muscles, the forehead muscle is are not really autonomous. They don't, their movement is very uh, like smoothing around uh, the bones, and the the lips they don't have really a much of a bone to to slide around. They're they're quite free, so. I would treat I would treat the the lips as if as if these are actually bones, if so to speak, because their axis should be in the center of the mass and not outside. But as I get towards the outer rim of the of the ellipse, uh, that starts to be more uh, like a muscle, like a general muscle. So it's not in the center towards the out outer edge. I hope I'm making sense. <laughs> the eyeball, let's, uh, this is uh, this eye here called I dot L and I dot R. They should be located exactly at the center of the eye. So let's signify where the center is. If I'll 
take the entire mass it won't work because uh, there's like a lot of there's a lot of uh, polygons around here so it's not the actual center so loop select and shift s cursor to select it and now we know that this is the exact center of the eyeball now referring to that we'll go back to the meta rig and change the location of the eyeballs here so now the eyeballs are the uh, the bone controlling them is right on the place it should be we can, can hide that for now won't clutter our view and so you'll notice also that you have the lids they sh they're here but there's also an upper lid area and the upper lid is made for the extra layer of skin or mass that is above right above the the eyelid and beneath the brow um, there was a m there was a design of the rig before that before we had that and this uh, this design was was not really working the it seems like something was missing so uh, so we thought of adding like another another chain of deformation bones to give that feeling of uh, of mass for for the under the that place which is under the the brow and above the the lids and it works pretty well I guess so let's move the entire lid area scale it generally and now move each element now here also the lids are kind of like similar to the lips in a way because it's also a circular muscle and also the lids are I mean it should be in the center of the lid mass um, there's no bone they're sliding on so and also uh, this part here and this part here these are this going to be the center controllers so we want to make sure they're on the center of the eye lined up as much as possible so we'll try to move them around a bit and with that being aligned in one line um, this part should also correspond to it because this is go also going to be a uh, primary controller and also this one so we have a setup that works uh, I guess this one also could be so there's like a, a line that goes here and makes more sense to uh, align these align the controllers like that I think this is pretty much it for the face except for making the places setting up the places for the teeth let's see where the teeth are located so there's one here so we want to make sure that it should be around around the center and this one here so let's make this bone here these are going to be controllers I'm, I'm moving bones here but just imagine that these two are controllers and now for the tongue so this whole area here is the tongue let's move and this chain is going to be our tongue let's move that here let's remember where it is this ends around here so yep seems like it's around the place and that's that settles the face okay so we finished the face and now let's continue for the other places um, this is the clavicle so it starts around here again the the bones of the clavicle should be like are more towards the outer sides 
but we want to make it as internal as possible because we're we're dealing with deformation and it's not exactly bones um, put the, the hand the arms here this character doesn't really have the, the best proportions or maybe you can just say it has custom proportions so the, the form is much longer than the actual uh, upper arm but that's that's what we got that's what you get so when we, I mean, we work in a in a studio and if you're making the rigs then you're not making the topology or the uh, the models so I mean only if you really get a crappy model then you can complain but if generally if it works if that's the design the design was uh, was approved then you just gotta do it sometimes though there are really I mean there are serious problems with the topology I mean here I guess the topology is decent but or with the topology or with the way the the model is is given to you so you can make the adjustment or tell the the one making the the model to make the the appropriate fixes okay so this would be the elbow putting it in the center the wrist center and extension here just put it like this between those two fingers or something like that I guess now the fingers so for the fingers I'll control I I'll press control I and hide the the rest and just just ma manipulate these guys and not consider the rest not relevant okay so I'm moving uh, each section of the finger to its appropriate place after that would be done we'll have to adjust the axes of each uh, each finger trying to put these things uh, at the center as much as possible just imagining where would they fold I think a good way now that I see it is uh, to work from the top to align these from the top and then go from the side because from the top you really can see the whole picture on the fingers Now some rigs, you see this uh, area here of the palm uh, bones, some rigs have all of these joints connected as one to, to the one joint, but, uh, and, and it's debatable, but in this, uh, with this setup, you can just imagine these are the, the bones of the hand, I think they're called the metacarpus, oh sorry, move them. So these really correspond to bones. Now aligning from the side view. And in here you can really there are a lot of things like hindering your view when you go to side view. I mean it looks kind of terrible, all of these bones on top of each other. So you can just go over to 3D view and just you know, try to maneuver around because you know that on the X and Y axes they're okay so you can just move it on the Z axes and it should be fine but again it's a back and forth issue because it takes some time to make it right it, uh, after a few minutes it's it's okay
there's a lot of back and forth here. I mean, using different views, you can see different mistakes. So it's better to search from all views and making sure from all to most views that the position is aligned properly. Now with this this model, the the fingers are extended. There's there's little to no fo uh, initial fold for the fingers, and it's it's generally not a good idea to not a good practice, I think, to uh, model your uh, characters. You want to make sure that there's like a slight a slight fold uh, initially, like there's a slight fold in the uh, at the the elbow and the slight fold here. I mean, it's an A pose, of course. Um, Want to give that natural feeling from the get go, because otherwise it could look when the hands would, when the fingers would fold, would look could could be problematic. So you want to make sure that there there is an initial initial folding of the fingers. But uh, in this case, it's it's not. It's not here. I mean, it's not done, but it's. Uh, well, we'll see how it works. But I guess it's not that bit of a problem. Okay, I think that's pretty much about it for the fingers. So, on high, seems like most of our character is ready. So now we have the general, uh, the general setup of the meta rig. Uh, now there are a few things that are missing. First of all, uh, we didn't really check something that is quite fundamental for, uh, f especially for this. Uh, this way of dealing with uh, rig types uh, is that the limbs, the hands and the the, the legs, they really need to ha to start off with a small bend. Um, I'm not sure, e even sure that this bend will do. We'll, we'll have to see how it works. Maybe we'll we'll move that around to like a bit forward, but um, we'll see. We'll see how it works. Uh, the the general idea is that. It should start off with a slight bend. Um, we'll see once we generate it. Let's uh, see. This seems like a sufficient bend. Uh, actually, this this point, uh, the default rigify has a better uh, way of dealing with it. So it has. It doesn't matter which way you would bend it, uh, the limb. It would work. But because uh, we have a certain way of solving these uh, soft IK and also not using a pole vector, um, it really makes m uh, demands that there will be a, a big, uh, significant uh, folding, initial folding uh, in the meta rig. I, I don't think it's it's that. Uh, I mean, it's, it's really s it's something that is subtlety, but just a subtlety to recognize. Uh, a few things we need to add is uh, some some bones that will maintain deformation. Uh, once uh, once the hand w uh, the arm will rotate up. Uh, let's just do that. Once the arm will rotate up and down. Um, this area could take a lot of weights around here so the whole this this uh, area and around the waists could be influenced and it could be like as if this whole thing is uh, being squ uh, squashed inside could have a really bad result so we need another bone to strengthen the influence around here especially uh, when I'm going uh, the the method I'm going to show of uh, weight painting is a method of uh, automatic weight painting. So 
you want to make sure that, uh, with this method that the bones are situated at uh, places at strategic places where they would take uh, the optimum amount of uh, an in influence of, of the weights um, that could also be another reason why I said before that uh, we want to make the put the joints try to center them as much as possible so uh, let's uh, begin adding these bones and then giving them a, a rig type so we'll make this kind of bone here that would be a chest bone doesn't have to be that accurate it just needs to be there to do the job so roll zero you know what I'll bring this uh, I'll, I'll uh, press the individual origins button here what it does is when I scale it doesn't matter where I how I select it when I scale it it'll scale like this so I can uh, take this point and scale it to zero and then move the tip like this on the y-axis and now it's aligned straight and let's just make the roll zero let's put it as if it was a chest bone the nipple, bones. The nipple bone sorry <laughs> edit that out okay yeah so it seems like that would be a bone that would take quite of an influence and could give a, give a good competition to this area so it would the heat of this bone would be significant so that's one thing now uh, just uh, duplicate this bone and have a hip bone the same thing could happen also on the leg when when this leg will rotate up it could eat up a lot of influence here so the leg will rise but it will just take a chunk a significant chunk you can just imagine the entire leg going up and, and taking with it the the whole pelvis area it's, it gives a nasty result so it's, uh, making uh, let's make this area here better so we'll take the head uh, we'll take this head and we'll simulate it as if as if it's actually a pelvis bone so the, the pelvis but there's a bone here in reality th there's like bones that are like situated it should look like a butterfly if you would look at some anatomy pictures and we're trying to simulate that so it's a it's a core bone it's right inside and it should trying to center it out as much as possible so it'll take the best uh, influence optimal influence um, okay now let's set up a good parenting so this bone should be the parent of these two let's make sure it's like that I think it's already like that yeah it's connected so because these bones have the same parents so that's also like that but these bones there need to be parented to this one let's do that okay so now remove that yeah, th these are the parents. Now let's set up the rig type. For this rig type, we'll use basically the same basic copy, and it's already on basic copy because I, I uh, duplicated this one. But uh, so this copy would create a control and a deformed bone. We're mainly interested in the deformed bone, but in this case, I think also a control bone uh, to control the chest area won't be such of a bad thing so we can do that maybe we'll have to tweak the widgets a bit because it could be like a weird widget so we want to make the we want to make, uh, make sure that the artist will know what to do with it but uh, the control bone is not really necessary here of course we don't need a control bone so we'll mark that off there's no movement around here and if there is movement it should come from the hips and it will take that with it as one piece so these things just add deformation for this bone so that's 
uh, that would be a general layout I would use for for an entire uh, an entire character but this character it has another thing and you can see that his jacket is uh, has two flaps and these flaps can be animated uh, by simulation um, but in in our project the simulation will take a long time it's baking it's computer power and it's uh, it's it tends to be a mess so we will add now to the meta rig some joints to let the animator freely animate this area as if these were two um, I don't know tentacles coming out treat it like that and it should come off from from uh, this area from the hips back hips area and we want to make sure that when we move these bones it won't affect uh, the legs so there should be a, some disconnection so here is how we're going to do it we're going to add two more bones which will take the same influence and they will be deformation bones that will make the disconnection they should hold the right amount of weight um, to connect uh, between to mediate between the flap area and the body because if we would directly now um, take this bone and let's uh, subdivide it and use it to be a flap area or even if we'd make this bone like like this without uh, any connection to the body which which is what would na you would naturally think when this bone would move it would take again a lot of weight so we need another another bone to restrain it so we're adding now this bone then select the cursor so we have this bone so taking the weight and this which is and this one these two bones would be chain uh, for the flaps so this is going to be parented to this one that's a basic copy without control so let's just uh, make the flaps seem better to work more efficiently I guess putting them in strategic places I'm and, and you would get a feel to it when you're when you're rigging more you would see when you could uh, would imagine how a bone would act you can also you can could by imagination see where the heat would go and how much influence it could take it takes uh, I mean, a bit of practice will get you to the place of intuition where it, it's just it's there so these two bones are connected let's give them an, a and rig type this rig type would be a copy chain here and a copy chain here it has controls and deforms and that's what we want and these two are deforms and there's a good parenting relationship we are maintaining here so uh, make sure the role is to set to zero okay it works okay and can, can zero that out too but it doesn't really matter just to make it look better now let's give the give this these bones names so that would be a chest uh, just call it a there should be a chest controller so we'll call these uh, we'll call them <laughs> ribs yeah we can call them ribs rib rib dot l
Medarar. Okay, let's call this one Pelvis. L. And this one is Pelvis.R. Uh, let's just call this uh, flap. Ah, come on. Flap. Dot L. Copy that. Dot L. L. Okay. And V. Flap. Dot R. So it seems like we have a meta rig that is ready to be generated from. So let's hit the generate button and see what happens. Okay, so let's generate this thing. Press the generate key and see and hope and pray that everything works well. Okay, so Let's see, we have some weird things here. Oh no, it's okay. That's okay. The widgets are kind of weird, so we'll make sure the widgets are fixed. And they should be here. See what happens. The main thing, the main cube. Yeah, let's do go down a bit. Yeah, okay, I think it's fine, but we'll see what happens. Okay, that works nice. Now I'm just trying out the rig itself without the deformation just to see if with itself the mechanism works and you see the flaps how they move because of their parenting relationship and it seems okay we talked about the legs and it seems like we made an okay fine job with setting up the giving the bend hint for the legs so they they fold to the right position oh it seems like we have a little problem here it's not folded enough when I extend the leg, it's jumping. Let's see if it happens with the arm. The arm is folding okay, yeah, and it's extending right. So the arm is bent correctly. The foot needs some better, a better hint. Just, uh, just when you make the models, make sure that that there's a better uh, hint yeah for the for the bend bending of the, the leg I mean it, it works but it just it, it's uh, it's not it's kind of not acceptable for for production if it if it's like that you can't release a rig like this so but it seems like everything else works okay the torso needs a uh, Yeah, it needs a little adjustment. Okay. So let's uh oops re rigify this thing. Regenerated, but make sure that the leg here would be a bit more. bit uh, more accentuated Split that. not too much let's so something like let me try something like this see what happens uh, 
okay regenerated test 2 and it seems like it works yeah so that that bending was enough to indicate how the knee should fold and it seems like it's doing a good job let's turn on the deformation layer yeah it works that's good that is good now uh, I think we're ready to start setting up the uh, binding process and we're good to go I mean it's really really uh, a, a crucial point here to make sure that the rig works because if it doesn't work then you have to regenerate it again and again I mean most probably we will need to regenerate it but just making sure that the initial layout is is fine it's workable and it's sound okay so what I'm doing is usually I move when I'm setting up the layout I move the rig itself to the layer below the first layer and the second lower layer would be the meta rig uh, and a note when you make it when you regenerate it you have to make sure that both the layers of the rig and the meta rig are on because if it's going to be only the meta rig and I'll generate it it'll an arrow will pop up I don't know why this is just how it works okay so uh, we have a rig and we have a character let's start uh, the binding process okay so now going for the binding process uh, first if we'll inspect the reinspect the mesh we see we have a few meshes here so let's begin with the first mesh and bind that and see how it works what we should what you shouldn't want uh, okay so let's start and see what happens when we make the automatic painting now uh, the automatic uh, weights now notice that I won't the in other tutorials or in some places you would see just uh, the method of just select taking the the mesh and then select it, shift selecting the rig and then control P and automatic weights but if we'll do that we'll, let's just try that press the automatic weights and see what happens now it's bound to the mesh and we'll see that it moves and it should be working fine and seems not very nice and all but there is something that is not that clean here and, and the thing that is problematic is that if we'll look at the ob object data of the mesh and we'll see it we're seeing a lot of deformation bones basically all the deformation bones that start with DEF deform um, they're bound and they're registered uh, in in the mesh but <coughs> if we'll s look at uh, in inside this list and see we have some bones that are not that really don't have any effect like there is the flap that we worked on and there's a pelvis and the uh, for our form we need but uh, yeah so there I'm sure there's like a leg somewhere around here that we don't need um, can sort that by the way I sort sort these things by name and it makes more sense you have a foot so I just delete all of these groups w once we uh, did the parenting um, there's an automatic uh, modifier that is assigned to the the mesh and, and that's the armature modifier but we want it uh, before the subsurf uh, because it's it's like a stack so first there's the armature and then subdivision surfaces now it's uh, it's all simplified 
but uh, we usually when we work with animation uh, we want we don't really want to use the subdivisions so we try to simplify the scene as much as possible uh, not to take too much RAM uh, so now there is no I mean th there is the 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 modifier is on but because there's no vertex groups vertex group to take the deformation nothing nothing's done nothing's happening so we need to make a uh, binding of selecting the only the bones that will actually make the deformation if they don't make it to the deformation we don't need them so let's do that we are going to put it on x-ray mode so we'll see all the all the bones and then only click on the layer that has the deformation bones which is as said the the last uh, the third to last and let's uh, select them so I'm going to select only the ones I need now which are these the hands and I think this whole area including this bone here and the entire face area without the tongue we are binding the tongue is a separate mesh so we'll do away with them now if and here's like a little tip in uh, weight painting if I'll I can I can go in and uh, enter into weight paint mode and when these all these bones are selected I could just go to weight and assign automatic from bones and it basically it does the same thing but it uh, these are automatic only the automatic bones I selected so there's not you won't see a leg deform or anything it's all these are exactly the bones I want um, there's a little thing you really it can't really be seen here because all of these bones are are uh, affecting exactly their area but if we had like a mesh and we wanted these bones uh, to these bones that you see here not to interfere with uh, with the weight painting process we would hide them so I would generally what and I think we can see this problem I'm not sure it's there um, because like because the tongue here should take some deformation I think it could cause a problem when it's apparent so what I usually do is I usually hide it and then I do this the, the entire process again but just uh, to show you guys how it what happens when I do that when I don't do the hiding thing Let's see what happens here so because the tongue is an inside inside the mouth and it was apparent when I was making the automatic weight it was not hidden uh, 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 blender thought that it should do the automatic weights and it should consider that the tongue is there so it won't give it it won't assign it an automatic weight but it will block uh, any automatic weight of other bones uh, that that would interfere that's why when I when I want to assign automatic weights I make sure that only the deformation bones are apparent that I want and the rest are uh, excluded by way of hiding them so now I'll reselect everything uh, the tongue is already hidden control I and let's hide the wrists now I have only the bones the deformation bones that I want to make the influence all of them are now selected now let's do this override it with sign automatic for bones these sh it should be the same it's the same number and the same uh, list 
of vertex groups and now it should be fine let's see yeah so now it didn't have any problem and it's basically a good solid uh, weight paint the there's a problem that we'll, uh, we'll fix later and it's with the the hands and feet wait here it's not that it's slightly apparent I guess but it's uh, the deformation between these two bones you have two bones to deform the hand and see that here you have 100% influence and just maybe 0.1 or something and here it's very also very high and a very low uh, influence there so it's it's very I don't know um, yeah harsh and we want to smooth we not want we would want to smooth it out between this bone and that bone so when the arm spins um, on its axes it's it's what it will make better deformation so yeah we'll fix that later now we have uh, a lot of other meshes to attend so this one is okay we can even hide this layer and go to the another layer let's work with the eyes and teeth and and the uh, tongue so the teeth they don't really need any modifier they just need to be parented to the teeth controller let's do that pick the select the object of the teeth and then select in pose mode the teeth controller and then parent to control p to the bone same thing, control P to the bone. And so we have here, we see that this controller controls it. Now the eyeball is not connected to this, to the eye master. It's connected to, we go to the mechanism bone. These are not the form bones, these are mechanism bones. That's the mechanism layer it's kinda weird and freakish and certainly not for the user but the user will only use this layer for parenting the eyes so the main bone here if you can remember it from the metaric that we assigned it in its position we can see it projected here in the uh, generated rig so we'll parent the eye select the object and select the object and select the pose bone and parent it to the bone now we can make a little test let's turn on the face layers and see if it works yes and it works and that's maybe the nice thing about uh, this rig setup is without any manual weight painting I got to a fairly decent uh, weighting setup I didn't have to go to the eyes and set up things it, it just it works I mean it has a few problems as you can see here I mean this thing for some reason it enters to the I mean it protrudes the eye and things that will have to be deal, deal, dealt with later but the general the general outcome is uh, decent for an automatic solution yeah. so that covers the uh, the whole internal organs of the face uh, we can, maybe we should hide them And now we are going to talk about the clothes. Now let's say, just unhide the other, the wrist. Let's say we're trying to make automatic weight painting on the clothes, as if we were doing to the to the body. Now the difference between the clothes and the body is that the body mesh 
is relatively smooth. I mean, if you would see the look at the topology, I mean, it's fairly fast forward. Maybe here and there you see some um, complexities, but it's fairly cylindrical, straightforward. When you deal with clothes, you have various folds, and the normals are heading in different directions, and this thing could cause a problem for the uh, the weight the automatic weight painting process and we'll see what happens if we just directly if we'll directly uh, auto auto paint it so let's select the bones we don't want to exclude them so we don't want the face we don't want this area of the hands I guess we want this bone just hide them and we don't want the flaps the flaps have nothing to do with this I guess we want this I'm not uh, you know actually I'm not sure if I, we want we want these bones but you know what we don't want them let's just see what happens when we don't want them deal with it like this and now let's auto paint it so control control P now because I don't want the uh, automatic weights for the entire rig we'll select armature deform and that will parent it in the outliner and will give us the armature modifier so we'll stack that up and now we'll go to weight paint mode select all the bones that are in view weights assign automatic from bones now give it a nice solution there's a little problem here because I think this joint is kind of like going a bit outside and this would demand a manual fixing here Do we see you see that this pelvis took took up an area as if there's a bone here and, and it's fairly right because in reality there is a bone the pelvis bones usually protrude around this area as well so it's pretty fine and here's a problem this area the neck took some weights but it didn't take all the weights that it's needed because some mesh was blocking it and that's a problem that happens when you have complex meshes like clothes um, when you try to auto weight them it can cause a severe mess so let's see what really happened here we'll go to torso and just try to move that around and see what happens So first of all, you can see that there are like things that are not, I mean, this mesh is really close to this mesh, but it didn't get the, the exactly the same amount of influence. And it causes like uh, weird friction problems. Same thing with the head and, and neck, all, only this one rotates, but not the other one. see what happens with the hands I mean this is not the worst worst case there are I've seen uh, examples where you have really elaborate clothing clothing with buttons and and whatnot and this is this is fairly straightforward um, but uh, again it's it's uh, if we'll try to look at if it works with with the body and you see that like it doesn't really sy sync up really well there are places where it protrudes out and it's not really in sync so for this for making sure that the automatic weight painting will go on fine and we won't have to tweak uh, each deformed bone with by itself uh, 
there's uh, another method called the weight mesh method and we'll talk about it now okay so for this purpose I've already pre-made uh, what I called weight meshes and these meshes we'll start from this one should have ap they approximate what they do is they approximate the volume of the mesh that I want to uh, weight paint and simplify it so all these folds and complexities are going to be generally weight painted here and we know that this is going to give us a smooth result like it gave us with the skin because it's it's smooth so the auto auto weight painting will sh should work well here um, once we've done that we're going to transfer these weights over to here with uh, the transfer weights uh, button and we'll see the results and it should be uh, should be much better than directly um, auto painting it from the rig to the actual mesh so let's see what happens I'll take this no this is the meta rig sorry okay just uh, take away all of these so these are my all my all the bones I want to use for deform let's just uh, oh it has already armature let's delete that and uh, we'll parent it with armature deform and then entering into weight paint selecting all the bones that we have and weights assign weights from bones automatic assign bone automatic from bones see yeah so it seems like it's done that now we're going to take this mesh select this mesh and then shift select the previous the the actual close and we're going to search for transfer weights I don't know where it's this button is uh, is actually found but uh, yeah I, I just go and search it from the spacebar so uh, transfer weights uh, all sometimes it's on active we can make sure it's on all here on this side and nearest face nearest space and vertex in face and all these things I usually don't touch it sometimes it works if you um, tweak with these it will give you a slightly different results but we'll just use nearest face replace all and I think it's should be working fine let's see what happened yeah so now when I move the uh, neck area the entire the entire thing moves with it now you see with when I move the torso there's no um, vertex. There are no vertices. They're coming out in a weird way. Let's see what happened with the with the leg legs too. We had some issues with that as well. Yeah. So the legs. Well, maybe they need some uh, modifications, but it seems like they're working fine. Let's see what happens when I move the leg up. Yeah, so there are a few issues here. I mean, one leg takes another leg. Maybe that should, that needs some fixing, some manual fixing. Uh, I guess it could be handled better if you see that the weight mesh is not exactly corresponding 100% to the uh, to the mesh itself. So uh, maybe a better adjustment of the weight mesh. Uh, would give a better result so but that's the general method so we use this one this weight mesh 
for this close. And we know it works, and that's, that's good. Let's go for the next the next uh, clothing, which is this. And we'll see which bones are responsible for its for the weight painting and influence. And then we'll inspect the these bones and how they work these controllers. Okay. So, and here is the other weight mesh. You see it's quite similar to this one. So, I, uh, I've treated the flaps as if they were like tubes. Because when you auto paint uh, or bind, auto bind the, the rig, to a, a mesh, it pick ups, picks up well uh, objects that are, that are fairly cylindrical or sphere-like. Um, they're very smooth and it, uh, it corresponds to the way Blender uh, calculates the, the heat of bones. So let's uh, bind, find first of all the, the bones that are responsible for this jacket just unhide all the other bones I think should be mainly these ones so I'll unselect them and then hide again the other the rest so these parts are basically the same as the the prior clothing but we don't need the legs too much I think we don't need these area from the legs down from the, these bones down. So let's select them, hide them. Because the leg area here is very close to uh, this area, and when you look at this jacket and you see where the legs should be, I mean, when the leg would move, this obviously would move with the leg. So the leg, the upper part of the leg, really does have a say in the uh, overall influencing. So that's why I, I'm still keeping that part on. But beneath that, it's not relevant. Uh, yeah, I think that's, that's exactly what we need. Let's hope it works. So first of all, let's see what we have. Yeah, we already have an armature, so let's delete that. And uh, we're parenting it. Control P, armature deform. So I select all the bones and then assign automatic from bones. And yeah, okay, so that's the result. Let's see what happens when we transfer the weights. Okay, so we're selecting first the, bi the binding mesh. I guess I could have done a better job in adjusting. I mean, there's like a if it would take exactly the volume and exactly the shape I guess it would be yeah, it would be better. So, there are some parts missing here I mean when you're working on it it could be a better job. I've I've constructed these uh, meshes these weight meshes from uh, just using uh, the uh, skin modifier and made a quick uh, a adjustment of, of the entire mesh but if you're if you're trying to make a, an elaborate weight mesh that'll do it will work seamlessly, then maybe we can put some more effort into it. Okay, so we're so we selected the, the weight mesh and shift selected the the actual clothing, and we'll uh, go to transfer weights and same thing. Let's see what happens. It's really cool that Blender uh, transfers the weights like automatically. You, it's like very fast. You don't need to wait at all. It just happens. I know there's there's an, there used to be a or maybe still is an, a weight uh, weighting tool wait uh, that that does the same thing, but it takes a long time. 
see what happens. It seems like it doesn't work. What what happened here? The armature. Oh, okay. Wait. Armature didn't have it, so I just put a red. Let's see what happens. Yeah. Okay. So it seems like it works. Let's see if it works in sync with the uh, clothes beneath it. And the real trick would be to move, just take these off. And the real trick would be uh, if this leg moves and this mesh is in sync with this mesh, then it seems like we did a good job. And yeah, it looks like they move in uh, unison. Uh, okay, and let's see if the flap works. Yeah, they seem seems like they work as well. Also, there is a little a slight problem when I move this, and this this is the danger I told you of. It took more weight around here. So we can do two things. We can go to the meta rig and move these these two bones like a bit below so it will have less influence and then we'll regenerate it and then it should work so let's do that the other one would be just manually weight painting it so just uh, move these two guys here move this one here Okay, so just move both of them here and let's regenerate. Now when you regenerate it, um, the, all the hierarchies and parentings remain. I think the teeth, will, the parenting we've done, will, that will, we'll have to do that again for some reason, or maybe the eyes, we'll see, we'll see what happens. Okay. Now we'll have to do the same thing again. Oh. Okay. Need to get used to this keyboard. Okay, let's select the bones I don't want to influence. hide them, select all the bones, and go into paint, weight paint mode and weights aside automatic for bones. So you see there's a slight change there. And now we'll transfer the weights. See what happens. Switching I love to use the IKs when I'm testing out uh, a character. Some people uh, love the FK. I'm a I'm an I'm an IK fan. It gives a very e uh, fast response, especially when you're checking checking out to see what happened and how the deformation works. Okay, let's go to the second layer and see what happens when I do this thing again. So yeah, we see that the problem decreased slightly, but not enough. Um, and I think from th at this point I won't regenerate it. I mean, I could play with it ag again and again, but I think we got the point and we can just manually, I mean, take this weight painting here and we'll like easily try to take weight down we'll set the weight to zero and the strength will be to 1.0 oh, and just make sure we're on X mirror and and there is also the auto normalize and we'll just tap a bit and making sure that this bone will not interfere with anything 
and let's see what happens. Yeah, so the slight tapping helped a bit. And I guess I mean you can make a better result, but I think that'll they'll do they'll do it for now. Uh, okay. So we have let's see what if all of it, everything works. Remember we hidden the uh, eyes and everything. Let's see if they're still bound. Yeah, okay, they're okay. Oh, we didn't touch the tongue. Okay, the tongue needs uh, the same thing. So we'll take the tongue and we'll take the the rig and we'll hit backslash. We only have them in view. And we can edit them. So for the tongue of course I only need only three bones. So I'll just select the bones I want and control I to invert the selection hide the rest and now I just have three bones and this is my tongue and now I take uh, I select the mesh select shift select the rig and armature deform and now I enter into weight paint mode select all the bones weights sign automatic from bones and now the tongue is auto weight painted and I I don't think there needs to be too much of a judgment adjustments after uh, after this Let's see yeah works uh, seems to work fairly well and I think that gives us exactly all we need for a basic character rigging uh, setup using the custom uh, rigify from Pitchy Boy. Let's have a few, let's try to put this guy in, in a pose and see if, if everything is uh, working, working well. This looks okay. This looks fine. Can stretch it out a bit, see what happens, scale it in and out. Yeah. So generally the it seems like the mesh is responding well to the rig and and we know for sure that everything in terms of uh, weight painting is and the uh, the vertex group data uh, that is uh, in all these meshes is is set up correctly. Um, could recheck that later, but it seems like all of it is working quite well. Also have our chest uh, adjustments, rib adjustments, and you can see also that when I talked about before, the hand is like now when the arm now is moving downwards. This is taking a lot of weight, so it's it gives a, a good competition, so it it won't uh, interfere. So that's a that's a good place we put the bone here. Yeah, and I think we're ready to start uh, uh, manually painting the, the the stuff that didn't didn't work well with the auto auto painting and we'll make the adjustments, the manual adjustment needed, especially around the joints, uh, the, the arms and legs, and then we'll go to the face.